With us, uh, Rod Phillips, who is the uh, Ontario Finance Minister. Um, Minister, thank you for being with us. Appreciate your time today. And I guess I want to start right there. Just, you know, the, the province is, is feeling its way to reopening um, and to firmer economic footing. But there's still some uncertainty around um, the, the high levels, especially in certain parts of this province, um, notably, of course, big urban areas like Toronto. So how do you think you're getting the balance right in terms of getting back to business, but watching that pandemic curve? You know, Amanda, um, we laid out a framework uh, now several weeks ago, and I think it's serving us well. We're moving, you know, in a planful way through from our first stage reopening, which, you know, we have now been able to begin to see the data and our public health officials can analyze that data. You know, in the days ahead, we will um, be making an announcement relative to stage two, which would, would be a broader reopening. Uh, another evolution, and in part because of the expansion of our testing capacity, we had a record number of tests done today, is uh, the fact that we're going to be looking at that on a regional basis. So obviously, at you are right, there are some areas of the province that are, are doing quite well uh, when it comes to uh, to new infections. And there are some areas where, where there are more. So we're able to both deploy the public health resources and now these pop-up testing uh, facilities we had in Windsor and in Scarborough and other places, um, but also look to be able to open the economy and maybe move into that uh, second stage uh, in some areas where there's been less impact. And we still make sure that, of course, we have the hospital capacity in place if there is uh, some kind of a flare-up. The Premier did extend the, um, the state of emergency through to the end of June, um, a, a, a couple of weeks longer than he's been in the habit of extending, uh, which, which caused some people to ask questions about what the thinking is there. Can you shed some light on, on what the government's thinking? Yeah, this is absolutely about making sure that we're in a position to respond and protect uh, the health of Ontarians, which has always been our primary goal. But but it doesn't affect our uh, our desire uh, when we can move safely to move into stage two of our opening to reopen more businesses uh, based on on a few things. Uh, based on what we've learned about how we can open businesses safely and just based on the reality of how some businesses are able to operate in light of what we know about COVID-19. We know that social distancing uh, is going to remain part of our reality. And so, you know, things like, uh, you know, large, large gatherings or businesses that rely on that, those are businesses that are going to take longer because of the of the issues related to the virus. But uh, but the, uh, the important thing is that we keep moving forward, we keep moving forward safely. Uh, and, you know, I think, you know, People in Ontario and businesses in Ontario have been great about appreciating, you know, the need to make sure we stabilize the health situation. As the chief medical officer said, we've we've planked that curve. It is now starting to gradually go down. Um, but uh, but obviously, there's still work to do to make sure everybody remains safe and and get the economy open. So then, when for businesses that are waiting to hear about getting to that next level, what are we waiting for? What will be uh, what will change the status level in this province? Well, we've talked about uh, really some major uh, criteria that we look at from a health perspective. Uh, first of all, the, the decline in cases. Uh, and of course, now, as I mentioned, we're looking at things regionally, but we want to see the level of infection going down. Uh, we also want to make sure that there's room in our acute care facilities and we're maintaining that room. This is why we are also restarting uh, other types of, of hospital uh, operations and activities, uh, but maintaining that we make, making sure we maintain that capacity in the hospital to deal with outbreaks and that we have the contact tracing in place, which has also uh, been coming into place over the last several weeks. So, so those are the criteria that, that we're watching. For the businesses, uh, what we've suggested, the Ministry of Labour now has over 100 sets of guidelines. It's the advice that businesses need for how to operate uh, their business. And so we have been making sure that businesses get a hold of that through their industry associations, through local chambers of commerce, so they can be prepared. Uh, and of course, when we make these announcements, we'll also give some notice. We're not saying businesses have to open. What we're saying is, you know, they would be able to open once we move into stage two and there's other businesses that are able to open safely. They have to make the final decision about whether that makes sense to make sure they can do it safely for employees and, of course, for their customers. One of the things that the Premier expressed uh, frustration about recently was the lack of uh, uptake in the federal uh, landlord program, um, the rent relief program. Uh, how tough can your government get? Um, what kind of uh, persuasion can you bring to bear to make more landlords um, step up? Because we do know that a number of businesses are maybe on the brink here and may not survive too long. Well, we 
we've seen, uh, you know, some in Ontario's cases, some thousands of applications now, and that's that's a good sign. Obviously, this is a program the federal government put into place, supported by all the provinces. Um, it got going a little bit later than we all would have liked, but it's been just a little bit over a week now. Uh, but I think we can see what other provinces have done in terms of uh, of the actions they've taken around evictions. Uh, you know, and the premier was uh, particularly clear yesterday uh, that that landlords should take advantage of this program. We will need to protect um, our small businesses and and, and those tenants. Uh, and you know, we would like to see the landlords make the choice to look at the program. I think thousands are, which is great. But as you know, there are tens of thousands of, uh, of businesses that we're looking to uh, to make sure are protected. So, so we're monitoring it very closely, and we can see the actions that other provinces uh, like British Columbia have taken. Uh, uh, Premier Kenny has speculated about the approach he's going to take. Uh, we just want our landlords to know that they should be looking at this program, and I suggest that they do. Uh, obviously, the big question for you will be, um, you know, how much spending has to go on here and um, how you're going to pay the bills when all of this is over. Uh, just give me a kind of a running sense of what you're thinking about how long the kind of maximum support that you're offering continues and when you start to taper off. Well, these are these are very important uh, conversations we're having with the federal government uh, and uh, and looking at our own finances. We, of course, shifted years quite quickly from what was going to be uh, a budget based on you know coming out of the best year of job growth ever to where we are now. And of course, as you uh, rightly said, tomorrow's announcement, which we know and expect will have more bad news. But uh, but the uh, you know the the plan that we put in place uh, put 17 billion dollars um, in into play, seven billion dollars of direct support, 10 billion dollars of deferrals. Um, we are still working uh, within that plan to make sure that businesses get what they need, individuals get what they need, um, and, and we're watching closely the economic uh, results as they come out. It'll be very interesting to see as we see the reopening. Uh, I know you commented there's been some signals about, about having reached a bottom. Uh, that would make sense because now we're seeing reopening in, in businesses, but there will be second and third order impacts of, uh, of the kind of shutdown that has happened. And of course, we have to look very much to what's happening internationally and particularly in the United States as well. So so those are all things that we're monitoring. I committed, uh, because I only did a one-year budget this year, I committed that I'll have a full update in August and then, of course, we'll have a multi-year budget in November. And at, at either of those junctures, Minister, will it be time to start talking about increased taxes to help kind of recover some of the uh, the spending? You know, we've not been believers and and remain believers that 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 uh, that people's uh, levels of taxations are high enough. Uh, but of course, we are dealing with unprecedented uh, situations, and so we are going to need to look um, across across the situation we're in um, as we start to come out of it. And so I think I think everybody appreciates that we are talking about uh, significantly higher deficits, uh, that leads to significantly higher debt, um, not just at the uh, Ontario level and not just the provincial level, but at the federal level. So we're all going to be looking for those solutions. But right now, it's about making sure we get through this as quickly as we can. Let's see that those businesses come back. Let's see the economy um, turn back up. Uh, let's also see what happens with regards to the virus. Uh, we are, of course, making plans in the event that there's a second wave. Uh, the best advice that we get from epidemiologists and others says that that's something we need to be prepared for, and we are making sure we're prepared for it. So, so there's a lot of uh, a lot to understand before we have to make those decisions. But we're absolutely charged with them. And you know, first of all making sure the, uh, the economy can be uh, successful while people can be safe. And are there particular programs that you're beginning to think about that you might want to introduce, um, new ones, different ones, a different way of supporting the economy or just the people of Ontario? I think, as as with any uh, situation where you have a downturn, we are looking at infrastructure. We already, as you know, have significant infrastructure programs, really record infrastructure programs underway, particularly in the transportation um, and some of the other building areas. Um, so that's one of the areas that I know uh, my colleague Laurie Scott, who's the Minister of Infrastructure, has been talking with the federal minister, Catherine McKenna, about, and that's something where there's active engagement with the federal government. And then I think, you know, one of the questions that is obviously going to be asked is, you know, with the existing programs that are in place, um, what what length of time do they need to exist? Uh, how long does that make sense? Um, how we can we continue to support and what kind of new programs? I, obviously, an area that everybody knows has been hit heavily has been the hospitality and tourism uh, area. That's, that's an area that uh, that we're looking at and I think looking at other sectors as well saying you know what's going to be needed to help those businesses in that case so essential to uh, to all of our main streets and to all of our communities to be successful 
All right, Minister, we appreciate your time today. Thanks so much. Rod Phillips is Ontario's Minister of Finance.